Uh, so today we have with us Tyler Wilsheets from Kalispell. And the background info on what we're doing today is on the Mountain Tough content calendar, we're always trying to think of cool things to talk about that'll be helpful for guys to prepare physically or mentally. And one thing we had on the content calendar for this month before I met you was a piece on bears and pistols and bear spray. And the reason that was on the content calendar was more and more than ever before, most of our buddies are having grizzly encounters in the backcountry. And the fascinating thing to us is everyone kind of has their own system. So some guys will carry bear spray, some guys will carry uh, a gun and a bear spray. And then it, it just keeps getting deeper and deeper with a lot of guys have switched to the 10 mm so that they have 15 round capacity yeah. instead of when i grew up in montana it was all about the big old revolver which was giant and heavy and you only had six rounds so we just wanted to dive into that and then through our mutual buddies i heard about your story and i was like man that's just the perfect way to dive into this topic is to talk about what happened to you. And yeah. I think a, guys can learn a lot from that and uh, help a lot of guys out. Yeah, I sure hope so, yeah, absolutely. So maybe we start with um, the morning of your experience and kind of go go through how, how it all went down. Yeah, perfect. Well, so I'd been on these couple bulls in this area during bow season. So I kind of had an idea of like, where I wanted to go, I had a couple spots marked on my Onyx where I'd been falling a few bugles and I got close, really close a couple of times, but it didn't, didn't quite happen. But working up the side of the mountain, I had this area that was like a, a, an opening, like a 20 yard shooting lane area where it's like flat. So you're going up and then there's a flat that opens up mm -hmm. and then it's really steep after that. Yeah. But what I'd seen is these bulls work down this little ridge line and kind of get to that flat right there. And the whole time they're accumulating cows and, mm -hmm. you know, you can see a couple satellite bulls here and there. And so I'm like, this is where I want to go. Yeah. So um, that morning I started obviously at dark, before dark, and I got up early and got out there. And um, so I parked my truck and I had my pistol, yeah. my 10 millimeter, in my pack and for the the three previous times i've been out there the two previous i had my pistol in my pack mm -hmm. and probably think like a lot of guys like man i've got plenty of time these bears are more scared of me than i am there's no way i wouldn't have time to take my pack off real quick and grab that thing and yeah. and feel like okay i'm ready to defend myself or just in case and you'd been in there before right i'd been in a there a bunch of times before so and it's it's northern Montana, it's super thick. Very thick, yeah. yeah, very thick. My shins would prove that. I've got <laughs> bumps and bruises and cuts and yeah. so, yeah. So it is really thick. Um, so I'm thinking, hey man, I, this thing will be fine in my pack. And then the, actually the third previous time, I got about halfway up and I'm like, oh man, I don't <laughs> even have the pistol with me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I'm thinking about like the reason I'm not really putting this on is because it is thick. Yeah. And carrying my pack, which I won't say what brand it is, mm -hmm. just like all the packs, they cinch down, they buckle in the front, but they buckle around the waist to help yeah. carry some of the load. Well, the way that I, the hip holster I'm carrying, mm -hmm. it constantly, the pack is constantly getting up on top of the pistol and pushing my pants down and just super uncomfortable, or you're going at such an incline that you're stepping up high. So yeah. the pack's grabbing up underneath the pistol, yeah. and jamming it up in your ribs. And you're like, this stupid thing, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm so tired of wearing this thing. Yeah. So I'm thinking, and everybody says, well, you need to get a chest holster. Mm -hmm. Well, I wear a bino, holster, a bino uh, uh, yes. harness right yeah. on my chest. So, which I know they have the ones that have the pistol in them now. Yeah. At the time, I just wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah. So, Honestly, I think what really happened is I got there that morning and I pulled the pack out of my backseat of my truck and I sit on the ground and I truly believe that God was there with me because the way that it happened, I felt like this, I need to put the pistol on. Yeah. But me, like me and my logical mind, I'm like, 
man, I don't want to wear that thing. Like it just is going to drive me nuts all day. Yeah. But for whatever reason, I undo my belt and I strap that thing on. And after I strip up, strap it on, I'm thinking I'm walking up in the dark. I might as well go ahead and chamber one. Yeah. Well, I never chamber one in that. That's crazy. Part of the reason is because because I am constantly getting it jabbed into my side or mm. I've fallen multiple times up there and yeah. I'm always worried it's going to fall out and who knows. Yeah. But again, probably like most guys, uh, there's no way I won't have plenty of time to at least rack the slide and have yeah. one ready to go. Yep. You'll see why in a minute that was wrong. <laughs> but so I, again, I believe that God was there with me. And the reason that I put that, hol that holster on that day was because that's what God had for me. I believe that that's what God does for his people. Yeah. He protects them. He guides them. He directs them in a certain direction whenever they need it. So, Because you've been, you'd been archery hunting with the gun in your pack or with the gun with a round not chambered exactly. until this day. Until that day. That's crazy. That's the first time. It wasn't the first time I wore the pistol. It was the first time I wore the pistol with a chambered. Yep. Crazy. Round chambered. Yep. No doubt. That's so, wild. But, but I mean, you see what I'm saying. Like, don't you agree that probably most guys are like, there's no way that I wouldn't at least have time to pull a pistol out and rack the slide. Yeah. Well, I, so I have two daughters and, you know, I'm, I carry my Glock 10M on a chest rig under my binos in a Razco. And even then with uh, archery elk and then shed hunting and bear, um, I just take it with me no matter what kind of trip it is. Even yeah. if it's Eastern Montana and there's no grizzlies, I just take it so I always have it. Sure. But still with the, the two girls at home, I'm always pretty nervous about chambering around mostly because I don't want to forget to unchamber exactly. when I get home. So I yeah. definitely understand. Same thing. I have two daughters. I have a 18 month old, 17 month old son. Yeah. So same thing. I'm constantly thinking about, I even pull the magazines out, put them different places. Yeah. Guns are always in a safe, you know, yeah. but I'm always thinking like that because you hear the horror stories, like yeah. something happened or forgot. It's, it's so easy to forget. Yeah. yeah. If, especially if you don't use it, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind or, yeah. Oh, it's in my pack. Oh yeah. But I've seen my son get in my, like my duck bag and he gets my duck calls and he's oh, yeah. walking around the house. <laughs> oh yeah. They'll so, play with everything. Exactly. Yeah. No doubt. But you do think you're like, oh, I just gotta, that's all I have to do is rack one. Exactly. And the other thing is too, like, as we talk about the story more, people will hear and you'll hear like, we're not talking about uh, a controlled environment where you're at a range and you're pulling the pistol out and you're racking the slide and then you're putting hands forward going, okay, I'm ready for this to happen. Yeah. It's sheer chaos. Yeah. Like in my example, which we'll talk about, I'm being charged by a six foot, 400 pound grizzly. <laughs> yeah. It's not like you're just at the range shooting a piece of paper. Yeah. Adrenaline, clothing, right. Which I've done a lot. Yeah. yeah. I I've done that. You controlled, but Again, another part of the story is I'm not just standing there. <laughs> yeah. There's another part of the story that happens. And, and so that's even more chaos. So you're reacting in complete chaos. Yeah. And then at the same time, you're, your mind's going, well, I didn't think this would ever happen to me, <laughs> you know? And so uh, there's just a lot that goes into that. Oh, yeah. Not just, oh, I'll go ahead and have one chambered. It's, yeah. it's thinking about kids, it's thinking about being in the pack, but it's also thinking, I've got plenty of time. Yeah. I mean, I thought I had plenty of time to have it in the backpack. Yeah. So that's just not, not the case when it happens. That's wild. Yeah. And then there was another God part of the story. Your wife had mentioned something about this day also, right? Yeah. This, <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Yeah. My wife and I were laying in bed the night before and we were both almost asleep and she turned, rolled over and turned to me and she said, I've just had this weird feeling lately. I don't need you dying young and leave me home with these three kids. And I'm like, what in the world? Like, oh, okay, well, yeah. like, what do you say to that? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, no, I'm not really planning on dying today. So <laughs> I think you'll be okay. That's a crazy thing to hear as you're ready to go on a hunt though. No doubt. Like the next day. No doubt. Yeah. And, I, and two, I, 99.9% .9 of the time, like most guys, like I'm pumped the night before and mm -hmm. don't always get the best sleep. And so I kind of tossed and turned that night and my alarm went off and I'm like, uh, it may or may not be the best day. Like, oh, it would sure be nice to get another hour of sleep. And yeah. But I was like, well, 
I'll get up and climb it anyway. I mean, how many times you know there's a bull in that area? Yeah. Uh, at least one. Yeah. So you're like, man, I've, I've got to go. Yeah. I got to go. go see. And then like you don't necessarily always remember those conversations you have when you're with your wife laying in bed the night before. Yeah. But whenever something like that happens the next day, you're like, man, that was the night before. <laughs> like, <laughs> what kind of genie do yeah. I live with here? Like, what? Oh, what yeah. in the world? So God was sending all sorts of messages. Exactly right. Yeah. And and and. And I think that's how God works just in general too, yeah. in our regular everyday lives. Yeah. You look back, if you tell somebody your testimony about things you've been through or where you are now and how you got there, and you, when you're saying these things, you're like, man, I kind of forgot about that. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of how God works too. Like, that's just how God works. He shows up in circumstances and yeah. you look back and you realize like, man, God was there through that entire season. Yeah, guiding. Or that entire event that happened through your wife or, or as you'll see it through some friends in this event, like it's it's just crazy how yeah. all those things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his plan. That's his yeah. word. That's what he tells us. And yeah. it's true. You just got to remember to listen sometimes. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Yeah, my wife would say the same thing, right? <laughs> it's hard to do in hunting season. Too. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly right. Yeah. Okay, so we're we're up in the mountain headed towards that meadow, right? right that yeah. you had marked on Onyx. Yep. Pitch black dark. Um, but I'd been up there, I estimate a dozen times probably to that same exact spot, mm -hmm. walk that same trail, that same game trail. So I knew where I was going. So yeah. it, doing it in the dark with a headlamp on, not that big a deal. And um, it was, I could tell it was a little hazy or kind of foggy that morning too. So I was, you know, when you turn your headlamp on in the fog, it like just makes this massive, like bright light. And I'm yeah. like, so I'm kind of dimming it way down. And then I could start to see a little bit. And I thought, as I'm working my way up, like I'm gonna call and just mm -hmm. see if I can locate by sound where these bulls are, or if they're still in the area. And so I'd walk five, 10 minutes and call. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, one of those hoochie mama calls. Yeah. And then I have a diaphragm call, which I'm okay, <laughs> just yeah. being honest. Like sometimes when you send off that one, you're like, you're like, oh gosh, what was, that? What was that? But so I'm I'm using that hand call and I'm carrying the bow and I call and then walk, you know, five minutes or so and call again, five, 10 minutes and call again. Yeah. So I get up um, to that flat and the sun is just barely coming up. Um, I don't even know if it's sunrise. Yeah, I guess the sunrise is just barely happening and it's overcast and, I think, well, I'm just gonna lean up against this tree. I mean, it's a big tree. I couldn't wrap my arms around it. Yeah. Just lean up against it and I'll call and wait 10 minutes and call until yeah. the sun gets more up and or if I hear a bugle and wanna make a move. Yeah. So I did that once and nothing. So I'm like, oh, I'll wait a few minutes. And yeah. so I try the call again and Almost immediately after it's done making the call, I hear some rustling in the brush up to my left. And so I'm thinking, this is it. Yeah. yeah, it could be a cow. Maybe that's that satellite bull sneaking in on me to see, yeah. you know, who knows. So I'm starting to pull one of my arrows and I'm going to knock this arrow. Well, as I'm doing that, I look out around the tree and I immediately see at about probably 15 yards of grizzly. Oh, that's close. It was, and it happened quick. I mean, yeah. it, he was there. It was right there. Cause yeah. I was telling you, it's so thick, you know, this vegetation so thick. When they're down on all fours, it's way taller than he is. The yeah. brush even, yeah. the smaller trees that are in there. And so I realized immediately, oh my gosh, that's a big bear. And he's already kind of coming towards you. Not only is he coming toward me, it's like if you go to a friend's house and like, oh, my dog is so friendly. Yeah. But as soon as you open the door, the dog's teeth like start showing and you're like, oh, I don't know about this. <laughs> it was the same way. Like the, the bear already had his lips up. So his teeth are showing. Jeez. And what they do in like movies or like cartoons, like the bears come out and they stand up and they go, oh, yeah. like that's not what happened at all. Yeah. This grizzly, as he comes out of the brush, I hear him making this noise that I had never heard a bear make before. And I hunted bears all bear season. Yeah. You know, so I, in that exact area. Yeah. But he's doing this like almost gargle. Like it was like a, like a talking. I've heard people talk about like they bark. It oh, wasn't yeah. that. It yeah. was like a growl almost or like a, now it's like, a, oh, hey, I'm coming to eat you sound to me. And it were his <laughs> eyes locked on you? Like he's looking Dead right on. at you. Yep. Dead on. 
And he's and moving. He's coming. It wasn't a walk, but it wasn't like a sprint either. Yeah. But the other thing is too, you got to remember, this is just at daybreak. Yeah. So at 15 yards, and and you've seen the photos, like it's a darker bear, although yeah. it has some uh, blondish tones to it. Silver. But I'm telling you right now, when you first see the bear at 15 yards, you're talking about 45 feet, that feels like you can touch it. Yeah. And so I, it kind of like, it startled me at first. Yeah. I'm expecting elk and I see bear. Yeah. And I'm like, oh gosh. So like I do the ultra heroic thing <laughs> and I take a step back and fall flat on my back. <laughs> flat on my back. You like tripped on a log There's or something? There's a, fall, a lay down right behind me. Oh. And I knew that because as I got to that spot, I'm thinking if I have to move at all, don't don't trip over that. Yeah. <laughs> but in the in the moment, like when it happens, your your mind like I for, completely forgot about that. Yeah. That was I wasn't even thinking about that at all. So you're down on your back now. So yeah, as I'm falling, I drop the call and the bow, uh, the bow in my left hand, the call in the right, and I drop it in the dirt and I fall flat on my back. And I'm thinking I got to stand up in a hurry. Yeah. So as I'm standing back up, I move the pack out of the way and draw the 10 millimeter. So I'm using a Springfield XDM. Yeah and I've got a red dot sight on it. How many rounds did you have? That carries 15 plus one, but I was carrying just the magazine. So yeah. I was telling you earlier, I keep the magazine out of the gun. Yeah. So I didn't have one in the chamber, so I had just the 15. 15. Yep. And uh, so I remembered this thing's already chambered. Yeah. So um, as I stand back up, I come back up to the tree. So the tree's on my left again with both hands out forward, you know, I'm. I've trained for yeah. these type of scenarios and I put the gun out and as I get past that tree, I see that bears at about 15 feet now. Jeez. And there's a lay down right there. And as he's stepping over that lay down, I do what I think I'm supposed to do. And that's just start screaming at the top of my lungs. Yeah. No, bear, bear, bear. Yeah. They say, make your arms big and all. I just didn't even think about that. Yeah. I'm just thinking. I want to hold the gun too. Exactly. Yeah. So I have the gun locked on and just start screaming. And man, it didn't make one difference at all. Really? Yep. Didn't change his demeanor or anything? Not anything. Still making the same noise. The story seems really long and drawn out, but this, this had to have been a matter of seconds yeah. to where fall, stand up, here it is. And start yelling, no, 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 bear, bear, bear. And I'm thinking like everybody else, as soon as this bear recognizes that I'm not an elk, yeah. he's just gonna turn and then I can go back to elk hunting. <laughs> yeah. But he he didn't. And there was no indication that he was gonna do that at all. Yeah. So head down, teeth are still out. Te teeth are still out, yep. And he is, I mean, we are eye on eye. Like I could close my eyes and I could draw that bear's head. It'd probably look like a cartoon character now, but because yeah. I'm not a good artist, yeah. but I could I can it's burned in your memory. No doubt. There's no doubt the teeth, the little bit of gray in between the eyes. Like I'm thinking, man, this is, this bear is getting really close. Jeez. And so it, you kind of get to that moment. You're like, what do I do? Yeah. And it happens so quickly. I like, everybody's like, look for the claws, look for the hump. 15 yards to right in close happened like that. Yeah. I'm, you're not thinking about all that. You're just thinking this thing is coming to me yeah. and it's coming to get me. And at that point, it, to me, it doesn't make a difference if it thinks I'm an elk or a human. Yeah. I just know it wants to get me. Yeah. So I realize that this thing is on top of me. Mm -hmm. So I have both hands out and it gets so close that I think it, I've got to go. Yeah. So boom, 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 boom. I, I, I don't four. know. I think it's four. It's hard to say for sure because yeah. it happens so quickly. Yeah. I know that at the end, I had shot 10 rounds. Mm -hmm. So I, my best estimation is that it was four. Yeah. So boom, boom, boom. And that bear is right in front of me and it takes a, back a little bit as it spins in a full 360. So it spins, so I knew, you know, yeah. the characteristics when you hit something, it like falls down or it spins. I mean, you know. Yeah, it had been hit. Deer, yeah, yeah. It, whatever you shoot it. Their natural reaction is to spin usually into whatever hit. Yeah. So boom, 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 boom it spins out to my right and it comes charging back at me again. Jeez. So I think that time I shot three more. Boom, boom, boom. And as I hit that time, I knew I hit him good. But I also know that bear was ultra close that time too. Yeah. Because again, I'm thinking after he spun that time, maybe he's gonna take out. Yeah. But I'm just staying locked on, you know? Yeah. And I knew in the back of my mind, I've got 15 rounds. Yeah. And we're talking about 220 grain buffalo boar rounds. Jeez. Not 
air defense rounds. Yeah, I mean, yeah. these are made for this. Yeah, and I know cast. I don't know how many times I hit the first, and I don't know how many times I hit the second, but I know I was hitting him. You could see the way he reacted. Yeah. So as I hit him, as he comes back at the second time, boom, 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 I shoot again. I know I hit him good that time because he rolled on his back, rolled. Jeez. And so I'm on the incline, and then it's the flat. So as he's on that flat and rolls that time, he starts to go down the hill to my right. So I'm backing up naturally, yeah. Yeah. but there's a lay down over on this side as well. So I'm backing up parallel with that. And he rolls down. He probably rolled two or three times. And on, as he's coming back up again at me, crazy. I knew I had good, uh, at least one good hit on him because his back legs were not working. Yeah. So it's dragging, dragging his back legs, but he is clawing at the dirt and the growl had turned into a I don't know, I'm oh. really mad yelling he's, at me. So he's crawling at you now. Crawling at me. Yep. His back legs are out. Yep, back legs are not working, but the front legs are. And it mouth full open now. Oh. And that's when I was, that, at that point, I had the opportunity to think, okay, hit him in the head. Hit him in the head. Yeah. So I really, boom, I know I shot three times on that last go. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. And I knew I hit him good then because he dropped. Yep. And then, then I think his momentum took him to where he slid and started to roll a little bit. Yep. Well, I had traveled about maybe 10 feet from my original shooting spot down a little bit. And he had fallen down to the right. And he went into the thick brush. And I was like, I got to get out Time of here. Time to go. Yep. Yeah. So I ran <laughs> the 10 feet up to my bow, grabbed the bow. There's that lay down that he walked over. So I ran, ran and jumped out of that and then went around and down. Crazy. And so as I'm walk, leaving out, I call one of my buddies, one of my best friends. And I'm like, dude, I need you to answer the phone. <laughs> He's not <laughs> answering the phone. So I'm sitting here thinking, what do I do? Like what, what just happened? Yeah, it just happened so, so fast. fast. So I call another guy, um, he doesn't answer. And I completely forgot about this till later in that day. Uh, I left them a voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> it is sheer panic, dude. Oh. Sheer panic. You can hear my voice like shaking. Yeah. And basically like everything happened so fast. I need you to call me because I, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Like I, You're hiking out while you're leaving this voicemail. Yeah. And uh, so I opened up like anybody, as I picked up my bow and took a round, I just dropped the magazine real quick and looked, and I just saw I had rounds in there. And I'm thinking, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I shot three times the third the third time he was coming up, but I didn't know how many I shot before that. Yeah. So I'm thinking- Could be out. Gosh, I hope I have at least one, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so I did, I could see in the little window, I had at least two. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, I, two is good. Well, this isn't like a, oh, let's holster this gun and get back down the mountain. This is like a, I'm going back down this mountain. Yeah. <laughs> and so, oh boy, I'm glad there wasn't like a squirrel or something because yeah. I'd have just started going oh, yeah. <laughs> But Good I left thing you that, didn't run into anyone on the trail. Oh, I know it. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you. I left that voicemail, and then the guy originally called, calls me back, and uh, I tell him, uh, he said, black bear or grizzly? I said, I, I don't know. Yeah. He said, is it dead or alive? I don't know. I know he's hit. Yeah. Uh, I know he's hit good. But I also know bears, I mean, they swallow up those rounds. And yeah. I shot one with a bow. It swallowed up my arrow. They stopped bleeding. I mean, they're just tough as nails. Tough. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I, I don't know. He said, get the heck out of there. Yeah. And so he said, if it's charged you three times, it, what's there's nothing stopping it from doing a fourth. Yeah. And so... I'm like basically jogging at this point. At least it's downhill, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys can make it up the hill jogging, but uh, not me. Down the hill, I'm jogging. And so, uh, yeah, I get back to my truck and I'm talking to him and he said, um, you know, get everything loaded up. He said, I'll, we can, I can meet, but it's gonna be a couple hours. And he's like, that's probably best anyway, yeah. just to stay out of there for a couple hours. Yeah. And so that's what we did. He met back up with me and um, we were, Pretty well armed at that point. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Going <laughs> back up there. <laughs> Spring everything. Yeah. Yeah. But I've been to that point. I already had an Onyx drop, but I dropped another one anyway just to make sure. And you never know. Sometimes the woods look the same. So you remembered to drop an Onyx pin on your way out, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep. I'm, I'm pretty diligent with that Onyx. Like, yeah. It sounds like an Onyx ad. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great tool, though. Yeah. If you download the maps to where you don't even need a, a cell signal at all, yeah. you can drop on there. And I dropped on there. I just dropped a little grid, uh, bear pin, so it looks like a bear. <laughs> and But I had marked those couple areas, and you could see I, where my trail was that went right through there oh, probably man. four, five, six different times. Yeah. So I, I pretty well knew it. But I also thought, let me make 100% sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I was also thinking too, it, this is good because if there is a dead grizzly there, fish and game's gonna wanna know. Yeah. And to drop a pin with a timestamp on it and, yeah. and all that is always really nice. Yeah, that was smart. I didn't, I didn't have anything to hide, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, please don't let there be a dead grizzly there. Yeah. Like, I, I told my, I actually called my wife, told her the story and I said, I'm hoping this is a massive black bear. Yeah. And you better be ready for a full body mount. Because if I got charged by a black bear, I'm talking about standing on back, oh, yeah. the back legs, like like full on black bear mount in our house. In the living room. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Maybe next to the bed or something. Or Crazy. So. so you guys started, well, I guess we should back up one yeah. second. Yeah. Because, and this I think was ver verified by the investigator, which we'll get to in a minute. Yep. But you think your first shot was like at four feet. Right? Yeah. And uh, what well, your arms are probably three and a half. Yeah. So that bear's head was a, about a foot or half foot from your barrel yeah. on the first shot. Yeah, exactly. So it, when it happens, you're not thinking, okay, six feet, five feet, four feet. You're yeah. just thinking, oh my gosh, he's here. Like yeah. he's on top of you. And uh, we'll talk about the full investigation later, but uh, basically as I'm standing there, you can see in the dirt and in the investigative scene, you can see my boot prints. Uh, actually, I told you earlier, I was carrying a call. Yeah. I didn't think about it, but I had dropped that call. Yeah. And so on my way out, I was just in a panic to get out. So I grabbed the bow, yeah. but the call was still laying there in the dirt. Crazy. And so my boot prints are there and then you know, you're talking about grizzly, so you're talking about claws. Yeah. And in the dirt, as that thing's coming towards you, like you can it's see it, it all in the dirt. Yeah. Uh, so it's not me just saying it's four feet, like the warden is pulling tape on things and he's wanting to see exactly how far this is or uh, this blood spot from that. Yeah. Um, and so he measured from where my boot prints were to the first blood. Crazy. And actually first blood, which was a probably softball size yeah. puddle, was four feet. First blood to boot prints, four feet. Four foot. Yeah. That's insane. And you're right, I'm six foot four, so my arms are pretty long, probably three, three and a half feet, I bet I could reach. Yeah. And the barrel, and then it's it's there. Good thing that round went off then. Exactly like right. Fraction of a second yeah. away from it, knocking you down. No doubt. That's crazy. Yeah. Yep. So now you're so now if we speed back up, you're with your buddy going to see what you actually shot. Right. Okay. Exactly. So I was um, on the way back up, and he's like, you know, hey, you you lead the way, and I said, I'll lead the way, but you stay chained, man. Like <laughs> yeah. keep one handy because, and I'm not this time. I'm not walking up with my pistol holstered. Like I'm walking up pistol in hand because, yeah. although it had been a few hours. You just never know. Oh yeah. I mean, that thing could be completely bear. in defense mode and uh, who knows. So we're both walking up. I don't know if he was pistol in hand, but I definitely was. Yeah. Um, he was behind me, so he's probably safe. <laughs> and, like I was telling you earlier, he's half billy goat. So if it came to running through the woods, I'd put my money on him, not oh, yeah. me. So yeah. <laughs> it was me that had to worry. <laughs> so we start getting close to the area and I tell him, I almost said his name, I'm not gonna say his name. Yeah. I told him, um, we're getting close. And it was just a few seconds later, I, I saw the bear laying there, just yeah. a big pile of hair. And he goes, that's a grizzly. <laughs> Instantly. Uh, yeah, he Crazy. definitely knew. And I did too. You, at that point, you could really tell. Yeah. You know, the sun had come up, the, the morning fog had burned off and yeah. So we got up close to it. And I mean, I've seen grizzlies before. I've seen grizzlies in that same spot. Yeah. but. Until you're like me to you to the face of this, the head on this thing yep. is just like a steer. Man, they're just huge. And the teeth, you're like, man, those are those teeth are crazy. crazy. But then you, as you kind of start looking at the bear, you're like, look at the claws yeah, on the, that thing. The claws are insane. And you're thinking, 
I mean, I was thinking the thing that's going to get you is this bear is going to come and bite you. Yeah. Well, forget the bite. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying that's not like that's a survivable thing or yeah. whatever. It's the the claws though. You're like that would freaky. Just shred me. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think they are? Like six inches on each finger? Maybe so. Yeah. I have Fine. a. I there's I was holding this paw. And I'm thinking, I mean, they're longer than my fingers easily. Jeez. And again, I'm six foot four and you know, I've got pretty good sized hands that they, they would, it just swallowed my hand. And I'm like this, I, there's no chance, Yeah. you know? And so it, that really puts things in perspective when you're seeing it right there, you yeah. know, you're holding this bear's like paw in your hand. You're like, holy cow. Yeah. Th these things are impressive. Yeah. They're unbelievable. Yeah. One swipe. I, it probably just shred you. shred right through you yeah so so when did you make the first call to report it so we identified okay 100 percent, we have a dead bear yeah and we identified 100 percent. this is a grizzly bear yeah and so uh my buddy and i step off to the side so that we don't go in any of the areas because you can see blood everywhere you can see the claw marks like i was talking about you can see where i was standing the boot prints and then there's just brass everywhere <laughs> so <laughs> looks like a range day you know yeah and so he told me he's like i oh i said i said i think we need to call uh fishing game right away let them know what happened he said man absolutely he said but let we don't want to touch any of this yeah this needs to stay yeah so that even if for some reason there's some questions about your story. The physical evidence is there. It's there untouched. Exactly. Yeah. And so him being like born and raised in Montana, he's heard of more of these incidences than, than I really have. Yep. Of course I've heard about them, but what he said makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, there's nothing that I did that isn't proved by the evidence. Yeah. And there isn't guilt other than unfortunately a, a bear is dead. Yeah. You know? And so, let's just stay aside from that. And uh, I called the game warden and he didn't answer, although he called me right back. And I told him briefly what happened. And he said, well, can you drop me a pin to where you access that area? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And he said, give me about an hour. I've got to pick up a wildlife biologist or a bear biologist uh -huh. um, and we'll, we'll meet you out there. Cool, he said, so just fast. Yeah, he said, don't touch anything. He said, come back down and then we'll go up together. And, uh, so that's what we did. Cool. Yeah, we went back down and here they came. And so it's the warden and a biologist. You take them up there with you mm -hmm. and they just kind of do a full crime scene investigation. Yeah, basically when they got there, I tell them the story. Yeah. So this is what happened. And this is down at the bottom of the mountain. Yeah. So, you know, I, I assume he's recording on the chest cam, yeah. but I know he's for sure got some recording device. And so... Yeah which makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, they just want to figure out what happened, you know, yeah. unbiased. And so I tell them what happened. And then he says, okay, that, that's good. Now let's go up there and look at, look at the scene, take a look at the bear and everything. And yeah. so they had me lead the way. <laughs> and he's got one of those shotguns and I'm like, you're bringing that shotgun just in case, right? There's one eating on it or something. Which, cause probably like other guys, you hear of a lot of grizzly attacks or bear attacks, and usually it's somebody shot an elk, they quartered it out, they oh, took yeah. half of it down and they're going back up. And then, So many times. And then it's like, yeah. then, you're, then you're like really susceptible. But I'm thinking the same thing, like I've got a bear up there. And yeah, I mean, another bear on it. Who knows, yeah. yeah. There's so many bears in that area mm -hmm. that you're thinking that could easily be another bear there. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, we probably should bring that <laughs> shotgun or the AR or something. I mean, you gotta. <laughs> He was still on edge, too. No, oh, yeah. there's no doubt. Yeah. There's no, I mean, hours removed from the incident, still on edge, like just adrenaline and yeah, kind of like the bear. I mean, if you get hit with 10 millimeter, um, however many times, and you're coming back and coming back, it's like yeah. the adrenaline is just, well, mine was the same way. <laughs> when did you call your wife the first time? Uh, after I called my buddy because, and I hesitated to even call her then, <laughs> but she knows that, where I hunt about what time I'm usually done and yep. when to expect to hear from me. So I thought I probably should just let her know that I'm okay, but something happened. Yeah. And probably don't expect me for a while. Oh. <laughs> so probably freaked her out. Huh? Probably so. Yeah. yeah. She said, Oh, you don't need to be going out there uh, hunting by yourself. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I, I did it now. Like, I mean, <laughs> I've proven myself. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, no. She, she, you know, she's always worried about me hunting by myself. Oh yeah. And I've always, my entire life, I've always hunted by myself, whether it's ducks or whatever, fill yeah. in the blank. And yeah. she's always hated it. And yeah. this did not help my cause <laughs> at all. <laughs> so, so yeah, they, the game warden say, well, why don't you lead the way? And I'm thinking, yeah, of course you want me to lead the oh, way. Oh yeah, so, again. Yeah. Uh, they did take a sample of my ammo before I may have been up there. I can't remember. They took a sample of the ammo. I mean, I think we were up there at the scene. Okay. But he wanted to see my brass, yeah. you know, the rounds I'm shooting versus what he's going to find on the ground. And yep. So as soon as we get up there, he, he kind of starts doing some investigation. Actually, I was with the, the lady, the bear biologist, talking to her, and she's uh, cutting off a sample from the paw and taking, I think she was taking photos and measurements and things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, sexing the bear, so it's a big, a big boar. Yeah. So a, bear, a big male. Which Did they, they say said, how big it was? They estimated it was right at six foot and four hundred pounds. Crazy. Yeah. Which it's not like a Kodiak Island grizzly. Yeah. yeah but Montana. A, a six foot grizzly is they're they're just like a pile, man. They're just massive. You know, their yeah. bodies are just so thick and yeah. Actually, part of their autopsy was the cut the head off and the paws off so that they don't get sold on like the black market because they yeah. there's definitely some value there. But also um, from the ballistic side, like they're trying to see, yeah, does what I say line up? And then can they find any parts of the bullets that would potentially be probably what I'm shooting, yeah. you know? But also I think they're making sure you're not, there's not like a, like I shoot a 280 Remington. There's not like a 280 Remington yeah. on the side of this thing either. Yeah. So and Make you can sure tell everything like, lines up. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell the big difference between like a 10 mil and a 280 Remington, let's say. Yeah. So they as they're skinning out the head and taking the head off, you can see some of the entries to where I shot. So there had a chest, a chest, a shoulder, and a neck. So which makes sense because it was probably the first go, either the first go or the second go where he's here or here, because it's kind of right you know, yeah. right that close. Yeah. But there's also one up on top by his spine, yeah. which could also make sense either. I mean, I guess when he was down the hill, I could have hit that way, but I also being six foot four, you know, I'm kind of up. Yeah. So it could have been They're the shot. Low. Yeah. Yeah. The wildlife biologist asked me, what were you aiming at? And I'm like, brown. the brown blob in front <laughs> yeah. of my face. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. So, which it actually is a really good question. I mean, that makes sense. Like, what, what were you aiming at? I mean, I, dude. Yeah. Anything, anything. Well, I know that there's like a lot of famous bear spray stories where the bear's charging head down, teeth mm -hmm. out, and the spray just kind of goes right over the oh, top. Yeah. So that would make decent sense that that first round could be right in the spine. Yeah, it could have. But also, you know, the characteristics of it coming back up this direction where the back legs aren't working, yeah. that's what kind of made me thought maybe that second burst of shots is yeah. where I kind of got him on top. I don't know how close he was that time. Definitely not four feet, yeah. but probably within 10, yeah. maybe 12. But even at that, at six foot four, I'm still tall enough that when he's down on fours, I'm kind of have that angle, you know? Yeah. So it could have been that time that, I don't know, either like crippled him or whatever. So yeah. crazy. Yeah. So, and then he had one in the side. So at least five, which again, for utter chaos, mm -hmm. they collected, I, you know, you could see the magazine. So I had obviously shot 10 times and they collected brass. I don't know if they got all 10 or not, but five out of 10 in, in yeah. sheer panic. That works. Yeah, and they only skinned out one side, the top and one side of the bear. Maybe if they skinned the other side, there may have been. Six, seven. Uh, to me, everybody, their follow-up question is, how big is it? How yeah. much did it weigh? But then the third question is, how many times did you hit it? Yeah. And my answer is always the same. Enough, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't know. Yeah. I know that there was at least five in there. Yeah. So, uh, enough. And so then they felt great about the investigation and they took the paws in the head. Do they just leave the carcass? So, yeah. So when we look, when they go up and do the investigation, the game warden actually took off for a little while and I was kind of like, where did he go? Yeah. Well, he came back down and he said he was looking for a cache, which for those who don't know, actually I didn't know that term. It's so if there's a deer or an elk, a kill, a lot of times they'll bury that. Mm -hmm. And then they're very protective within that vicinity. Yeah. So that's what he's looking for. Maybe there was something that he has already killed in that area. So he's being protective and dominant of his area. That makes sense. Which would make sense because it's a big male. Yeah. Um, but he didn't find that. 
Uh, he collected a bunch of the casings, took a lot of photos, uh, again, measuring different things and uh, how far I was from certain areas and things like that. And so, you know, he does all, all of those things and he says, okay, now you need to know it's, this is a federal thing. Yeah. This isn't a, hey, state of Montana, we'll take care of this one. Yeah. He said, we will, but the federal side also kicks into effect. Yeah. He said, there's somebody who flies from Denver uh, and they'll be coming up to meet with you in the next day or two. And I told him, I said, yeah, that's fine. And he said, you know, I'm not really supposed to tell you like my conclusion. Yeah. He said, but I'm probably gonna do it anyway. He's like, there's two things from that. He said, and again, at this time, I don't know how far I was from the bear. He said, yeah. one, he said, this is one of the most justified grizzly shootings that I've worked on any case. Crazy. He said, what ends up happening a lot of times is guys shoot them at 50 or 60 yards in the butt. Yeah. And then they go, oh my gosh, that's a lot further away than I thought. Yeah. He said, do you know how close you were? And I said, close enough. And he said, you know, you're right at four foot from first blood. That's insane. And he said, my second conclusion is he says, you have the sickest grizzly bear story of somebody who didn't get actually mauled yeah. or attacked by a grizzly that I've ever heard. Yeah. He's like, dude, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, he didn't get hit. So uh, after, after he tells me that, he said, well, the next steps are, he said, uh, we're going to leave the bear as it is because the federal investigation will come in and they're going to want to see all this also. Yeah. And I, kind of like everybody else, was like, well, what if something drags that bear off? How long can they leave it? Right. Yeah. And he said the same thing. He said, you know, the odds of it being there tomorrow, maybe the following day, I don't think so. Yeah. Because <laughs> he knows how many Another bears grizzly. are in there. Yeah. yeah. Grizzly. And then black bears are everywhere. Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, who knows? Yeah. So we get down the mountain. Uh, we talk for a little while and he said, you know, we'll be in touch. Uh, and, and just kind of left it at that. And I said, man, I appreciate you. No problem. Really nice guy. Yeah. Ultra nice guy. And, and so was the lady. Yeah. Just a, a really, really nice lady. Awesome. Of course, she airs more on the advocate of bear spray, which is a topic we'll definitely talk about in a second. Yeah. But they drive off. And so my next steps is I'm waiting for a federal agent to contact me and to come look at it. And about 15 minutes later, we're sitting down there talking with a guy that lives in that area. Yeah. And his wife who heard the shots that morning. Yeah. And oh, she heard it. She heard it. Crazy. Which I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, about 15 minutes later, 10, 15 minutes later, they come rolling back up again. And I'm like, well, that's weird. Cause I, we were just about to get in the truck and go home. Yeah. And he said, well, I contacted the federal agency and I told them the story and um, they said, seems pretty open and shut. We're just gonna let Montana handle this one. Oh, cool. And that, I mean, I wouldn't say it was a relief, but it kind of is a relief yeah. cause you're like, there's nothing to hide, but then so again, much evidence. exactly. Yeah. There's so much evidence right there, right then. Yeah. And he said, well, the downside of this is we got to go back up the mountain again. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, that's when I could have used mountain tough, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Just all day. No doubt. Yeah. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Good grief, man. <laughs> so their intent this time, I asked them, I said, what do we need? They said they need to take the skull. Yeah. They need to do the ballistics. So they're going to skin it out on at least one side of it. And then they're going to take the paws. Um, just because they don't want any, yeah. anything, you, you know, know grabbing to them. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, or somebody walks up on it yeah. and then calls fish and game like, Hey, yeah. this isn't right. <laughs> yeah. So they took those, you know, those few parts of it and, uh, yeah, did some more measurements and then, um, took some more photos and cool. we were out of there. So with that all said, and I mean, you brought up the point of bear spray, yeah. I guess. What are you telling your buddies now that are asking you about, like, what should they be thinking about? How should they be prepared? Yeah, I think, I honestly think the game warden said it the best way. Yeah. You know, I didn't include this in the story, but he, what he said is that, and it makes 100% sense, in panic situations, sometimes one arm or the other will slip or fail. So for instance, I could have went for the pistol and missed, yeah. or it got hung up in my pack, or I dropped it. Yeah. He said when he hunts, and he's an avid bow hunter, in the same area that I was, mm -hmm. he said he carries bear spray on one side and a pistol on the other. Yeah. And I, said, I asked him, at four feet, which one are you going with? 
Uh, I'll let you guess which one he said. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> but what he said makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I, I honestly think that maybe that's the side that I'll I'll err on also. Maybe on my pack, I will carry a uh, can of bear spray because if it's at 15 or 20 yards, maybe that shot would deter it enough that it doesn't have to come down to, okay, I've got to shoot here. Yeah. And it's not even just about like a grizzly life versus my life. It's like, I kind of just want to spray this and be done with it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you don't want to have to call the wardens. You don't want to have to go through all these things. Yeah. Um, I think that I really do think that's a good advice. Yeah. My second thing that I tell people is I don't care what, care what caliber you carry. One of my best friends, the one who came up there with me, carries a 44 mag. Yeah. The next day he went and bought a semi-automatic Glock 20. Because of the six rounds probably yep. on. Yeah. Yep. It, I mean, I'm shooting two 20 grain bullets. Yeah. Six rounds. I don't know that third attempt of the bear coming up. It could still be coming. It could. Yeah. And, and even though I was able to hit it good, or you could make the argument, man, if I would have shot better. Yeah. Or if you can say, if I'm in that situation, well, that, that bear's dead the second time it charges me. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a pretty good shot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but there's a difference in shooting at the range, like we talked about, and yeah. shooting in, in a panic situation. Yeah. Not to mention, I was just flat on my back. So as you're standing up, you're, I mean, it happens that quick. So, I mean, you could be, I mean, who knows? You could be dizzy. You could yeah. slip again. Yeah. Um, there, there's all that to consider. All that to say, the last feeling I would want to have is that I shot all six rounds and here comes that bear again and I have a broadhead. That'd be terrible. You know? Yeah. Then what? Yeah. And, and, and even at that, like just because the back legs weren't working that second, maybe they could start again. Yeah. Then where, like, where do you do? Yeah, especially if you think about under stress and even through your circumstance, if you think you hit him 60% or 50-ish, yep. then, you know, six rounds, you may maybe only hit him three times and Bingo. now you're out. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. But I, I do think that there is something to say about the bear spray to a certain distance. Yeah. And I, to me, it was really cool because it was, not only was the warden very knowledgeable, but so was the biologist. Mm -hmm. Although I didn't agree with everything that each, that one of them in particular said, yeah. I understand the stan their stance there. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a resource there and there are laws about that resource. Yeah. And so their job, and rightfully so, is to protect that animal. Mm -hmm. But my defense is not at the, not at the expense of a human life, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And so even 15 yards when you're that close to a six foot, 400 pound grizzly, that's really close. Yeah. But I'm just saying potentially, or maybe if you just shoot off a little bit of bear spray, maybe that is enough that they go, oh gosh, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't know. It's pretty common now. You see it a lot where, where hunters are carrying both. So they're carrying the 10. Mm -hmm. Most common is what we see now is the 10. Yep. And then they're carrying the bear spray. I think I've seen it work so awesome from the perspective of nowadays, there seems to be a lot of instances where there's like the grizzly that just is kind of like harassing your camp, mm -hmm. um, keeps coming back, harassing the camp. And so guys will kind of like spray it off just to get that thing out of the area. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest <clears throat> issue I have with that is mentally under that stress. Now you have two things to think about. No doubt. So now it's like boom, boom. Exactly. Could mess you up. Yeah, there's no doubt. Again, I said, if you're thinking clearly at 15 yards, maybe you go for that. Yeah. I, I will say at 15 yards, I'm not going for bear spray. I don't yeah. know if I have it or not. Yeah. I mean, again, the entire time as the bear's coming at me, I'm thinking, it's gonna recognize who I am, that I'm a human, it's and it's gonna veer off, yeah. And so even at 15 yards, like you don't wanna prematurely just start shooting bear spray out. Yeah. And one thing the biologist said specifically is that people commonly do that. So they'll have like a, like where they keep their dogs, yeah. say it's in a chain link fence. So they'll spray bear spray around the ground. She said, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. If you spray your camp ground, like it doesn't work like that. That yeah. doesn't deter the bears, they smell it, but what they want is more than that small deterrent. But when that spray actually hits them, it's its most potent the second it comes out of the can. Yeah. But then once it's uh, 
combined with the air, yeah. it kind of dulls it down. So the, the, the biggest thing is that it's a deterrent in as most when it first comes out of the can. Yeah. And she said that their senses, like bear's senses, their, their most powerful sense is their sense of smell. So you're trying to affect that, you know, as quickly as you possibly can. Wow. So uh, it makes it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But you're not trying to make sense of something when it's coming to trying to eat you. Like yeah. you're trying to, like you're in a, a I was in a full on defense mode. Yeah. And, and as the game warden said, like a justifiable defense mode. Yeah, your story, I mean, can help a ton of hunters with the perspective of don't put your gun in your pack. It would be the same for bear spray. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, exactly. you have to have easy access to that thing. Yep. A lot of, you know, the, like pulling out of your story, it's like it's got to be easy to reach. It's got to be accessible. You got to be used to it. You have to have trained with it. Mm -hmm. Even if it's bear spray, you got to know how to deploy that safety lid in a fast manner exactly. and just be ready. Yep. The warden said to, if you're going to use bear spray and carry it in the woods, just like you would practice with a firearm, you should practice with bear spray. Mm -hmm. So his recommendation and her recommendation was to take and buy two cans and discharge the entire first one just like you're practicing uh, for sighting in a rifle or, or a pistol. Mm -hmm. And so that way you know how to use it. You know how it works. Yeah, it's kind of hard when it's 50 or 60 50 bucks. bucks. <laughs> you're like, oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, man, that wasn't cool. But yeah. it's kind of like ammo prices right now, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> it's crazy. But it, makes, I mean, it does make sense. So will you go right back in and hunt that same spot? You bet. Not yeah. worried about it? Not at all. Yeah. yeah not at all. I mean, there is a little bit in the back of your mind, like uh, I didn't think that that would ever happen. Yeah. And, and I've even had buddies that I kind of picked their brain. They said, you need to be cognizant of it, but it's not ever gonna happen to you. Yeah. And the game warden said too, he's like, well, you've experienced that grizzly encounter now. I said, you can hunt good the rest of your life. It's never gonna happen again. I was like, dude, well then you call my wife yeah. and you tell, <laughs> you tell her I'm good from here on out. Oh, he jinxed you now. Yep. yep. Crazy. Yeah. So any other advice you want to give before we wrap things up? I would, I would just say, I mean, I don't, I don't carry what you, I don't care what you carry, carry something. Yeah. If it was me, I won't go in the woods again without a 15 round 10 millimeter. Yeah. I just don't think the six is applicable in whatever size, 357, 44 mag, whatever you want to carry. I would way rather have five less left mm -hmm. than be out and then be in a bind, yeah. you know, to where you're, you're defenseless at that point. Yeah. And so I've hunted since then and I'm not carrying bear spray. <laughs> so all yeah. that that I said earlier in, in the defense of that, I, I carry the 10 millimeter. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the other thing is too, like, I think anytime anybody goes through some type of circumstance like this, it's important to, to talk about it like we are right now mm -hmm. so that potentially down the road, this could help change somebody's mind about it. For sure. There's somebody who has been going out hunting mm -hmm. and says it's never gonna happen to them like, yep. it, like I have, and they leave it in the pack or they forget it in the truck. Yep. And that's literally the entire point of me doing this is for two reasons. One, and most importantly, to see how God was working in that scenario. Yeah. Like God worked in and through that circumstance to where I can go around and tell people and share with people, hey, you're not above this happening. Yeah. I mean, I don't care if you've been doing it for 40 years or you're just starting. Yeah. The bear does not care at all. Yeah. If you're in its area and you're messing with the resource, whether he thought I was an elk or I was trying to shoot his elk, yeah. it didn't matter to him. Yeah. You know, it, nobody's above that. Yeah, place and time. Exactly right. But also too, like God is there and protects his people. Mm -hmm. and, and you can see that evidently through that morning as I was walking up the mountain, I was praying the entire time. I do that a lot because in nature, it's really cool to be able to look around at things and to think about God and creation. And yeah. But I wasn't praying like, God, don't let me get eaten by a grizzly bear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just praying about my family and the church and, and all of these different things. and yeah. And... And God's promise is that when we communicate with him, he is there with us. Mm -hmm. and, and there's no doubt looking back, even to the conversation the night before, like God was there with me in that yeah. circumstance. And the next morning as I'm pulling out my pack and as I put it on, and I mean, I even had to pull it back out and chamber around and put it back in. And I don't do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have another explanation other than I feel like 
to me, God was there and provided provision in that circumstance. Yeah. And here I am to talk about it. Yeah. You know, it could have been a lot worse. The game warden said it best. Generally, when a grizzly was, is within four feet of people, we're not looking for evidence of why the grizzly's dead. Yeah. It's the opposite. Yeah. We're looking for evidence of how this guy got hurt or mauled yeah. or worse. Yeah. So. Fraction of a second away. Yeah. Exactly right. That's wild. It is. Awesome, man. Well, thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm thanks. glad you're still around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. No doubt. That's an amazing story, and I think it'll help a lot of people. And yeah. I think I totally agree with you that I think no matter what someone does, they should carry something and they should know how to use it, mm -hmm. and they should have it with them no matter where they're at. Yeah, exactly right. Awesome. Exactly right. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. I appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yep.